here. So with that, we come to a close to another amazing summit. And as we say every year, the summit every year gets better and better. And I can't imagine that we've ever had a more esteemed group of panelists and moderators, fireside chats than we, we did this year. And so um, thank you all. I'd like to share some of my learnings and, and tell a story. So I captured five learnings over the course of the day, and I think that you'll appreciate these. Uh, the first is that, and I cringe saying this having grown up in Merck, but Pfizer is the coolest biotech company in the industry. The second, the second is Stelios Papadopoulos is a gourmet chef, but the jury is still out on Elias Serhuni. The third is a truism, which is that Sam Waxall cannot be contained. The fourth, I love this, is sometimes you get back from the, sometimes what you get back from the FDA would make Alan Greenspan. That's one from you, Chris Backer, and then you get another, which is the last one, is that if you work in pharma and want to be loved by a dog, and Chris, I have two dogs, so I'm pining for love. <laughs> the second, more seriously, is a story that takes me back to Majid Jafar, one of our panelists in the Rare Diseases panel. So I met uh, Majid in 2016, January of 2016 in Davos at the World Economic Forum, my first and so far only time at that incredible setting. And it's like speed dating. People reach out and try to meet with you. And so here was this uh, brilliant um, oil magnet from uh, UAE wh who wanted to meet with me. And so we sat down and he started telling me the story of his daughter that he mentioned today, Alia who had just been diagnosed with this very rare genetic condition called CDKL5 deficiency, of which there were only tens or maybe hundreds of patients in the world. We had a great conversation and we've become friends ever since. And the story is that what, what Majid has done with his wife, Lynn, over the past half decade defines innovation in our industry. They were inspired, saddened, and then inspired by a disease that their daughter had to understand this disease and to fi find a cure. And so a brilliant engineer businessman who had inherited a family business, spent half of his time running that business and the other half of his time trying to seek a cure. And what he's done in terms of rallying the world, academics and industry together in terms of enhancing diagnosis. So today, the disease that we thought was, was tens or hundreds is now thousands or tens of thousands. And the great progress that he's made in advancing innovation is really an allegory of the world we live in. And then separately, and it brings me to something that we didn't touch on at the level perhaps that we needed to today is diversity, equity, and inclusion. And I'll tell a story, which I, I apologize to Majid in advance for telling this, but he started it. And his wife, Lynn, who's a brilliant individual in and of herself is of course not well-versed in healthcare, but Majid had started to get to know what healthcare was about. And he told the story explaining what was wrong with Alia, which is that she had a letter missing in one of her genes. And Lynn, you know, perhaps naively said, well, why can't we just replace the letter? And she got mansplained. And she got mansplained by Majid. She said, well, no, you can't do that. Well, in the end, you actually can do that. You can. And that, in the fact, may be the, the cure to diseases like CDKL5 deficiency. And it takes me to this idea of diversity, equity, and inclusion, because great ideas such as the idea that Lynn have can come from anywhere, anywhere. That's why we need to emphasize diversity and inclusion in everything that we do. And the last comment I'll make relates then to this organization, which, which if you look back and you look back at our website, you look back at the meetings that we've had up until last year, we've not been diverse. We've been men standing up here talking with other men. Last year, we started to change that even more strides, but I have to, and I have to thank you, Karun, for really standing up as well as the advisory board for taking hold of something that perhaps we should have even before we did. But we're on a learning curve as much as, as the world is, and we're committed in this organization to ensure that when you sign in next year, the people you see on the screen represent the diversity of the populations that we live in. My last comment, and then I'll hand it over to Karun or thanks in three buckets. The first, I'd like to thank the incredible group of participants, our moderators and our panelists. It was just really remarkable. And the preparation that all of you made and in going into today showed in spades. Uh, second, I'd like to thank Karun. Karun is, as Martin Bukai said, once you're in two years in a row, you're in for life. Karun is just a force of nature. And every year, it's Karun's will 
that makes this happen. And then thirdly, and most importantly, I'd like to thank all of you. If you're sitting here over the course of today, engaging in this discussion, you have an interest in healthcare. Now, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're a VC, whether you're in biotech, whether you're a physician, whether you're a scientist, whoever you are, you may have different motivations, but we all share a common motivation. And that's our interest in ensuring that lives can be better for patients around the world. And that's our theme from end of one to end of a billion. So with that said, Kroon, I will thank you once again and hand the mic to you. Uh, copy Andy. I think uh, what have you said, thanks for everybody except myself because I can't thank myself. So thanks a lot. We have a, I think if we can go for the full screen, you can see there are a couple of colleagues in the gallery view. You can see all of them, they are there. So thanks here, you know, being with us. But before that, you know, uh, many of you don't know that, you know, background, uh, we had this, our own uh, vendor, um, virtual MNC, just we got them two weeks back. And uh, all these colleagues are joining in from uh, Delhi, Hyderabad, and from Jaipur. Uh, different teams are there. And I think they did a reasonably good job. Uh, you're not able to watch it, but I was on top of them since morning, you know, today, of course, before that also. But I think uh, there's a good learning and they've done a you know, great uh, job in terms of execution remotely. And they've been very flexible in terms of, you know, uh, doing your tech check and everything. Everybody had their scheduling problem and everything, but they were very, uh, you know, like till about two o'clock in the night, they were able to do that. So if you're around, you raise your hands from your, you know, virtual MNC, where are you? And yep, Mayank is there, uh, Pratik is there. Where is Pratik? Do we have more? Okay, Pratik is on the next page. Let me see that. Yeah, Pratik is there. I see him. All right. And Dr. Priyank is there. So thank you so much. I think you did a good job. Hopefully we don't have to do this work next year. We'll do it in person. But if at all we do it, we will get you in definitely and recommend you to all of you. So thank you so much. Now, uh, coming back, I think uh, I've done a uh, lot of work. So I need some rest. So Stelios, take over. Well, uh, to you, Karun, and our dear Supreme Commander, Andy, truly, truly congratulations. I know I... I, I know I believe this strongly. This was the best ever, even though it wasn't face-to-face. -face. And I should say this, the last time I attended a whole conference from beginning to end may have been 30 years ago, but I was glued on the monitor all day to day. Great job, every panel, fantastic. So congratulations. Elias, uh, you have to be short because you overstepped already about 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> great, great job, uh, Elias. Thank you. Go ahead. You're talking about me? Yes, yes. I'm talking to to you. Well, I, I agree with Stelios and I agree with Andy. I think you're a force of nature. I've learned a long time ago that never turn down Karun. It's, it's, a lot harder, it's a lot harder to turn him down than to just accept right away and say, okay, I surrender. And so I surrendered to your requests and... Uh, all of us did, and you achieved an extraordinary result. As always, it's a fun to work with you. I think uh, some people were, had trouble with the background, and I did, and uh, you helped, your team helped me fix it, so I'm on your background. But frankly, I think the, uh, the conference really addressed leading edge issues, and that's what I like about the way this comes together. And Andy, as a moderator, I promise once I, perfect my couscous cooking, I will invite you. So um, I'll try to match Stelios in, in his... Uh, <laughs> we're a good group, we're a group of friends. This is what I like, the fact that we have an open dialogue and I think you're able to attract, as, as Andy said, a more diverse, more inclusive participant group and moderators as well as contributors, which I think should really... Um, uh, be, in my view, an example of what can be done virtually, but hopefully next year in person. So that I'll yes. stop, uh, Karun, and thank you thank again. You, for you know, uh, what do I do? I do at the behest and instructions of my commander in chief. So Andy directs me and I go after you or anybody he directs. So, so you know okay. who's behind me all the time. Ask for it. You are a very persistent, resilient um, uh, manager of uh, 
many, many, many other people. <laughs> and, and frankly, we did it, you know, we brought who you wanted and we, we organized the, the things as you wanted. And like, as I said, guys, don't, don't resist Karun. There's no yeah. reason to do that. I th I'm sure all of you agree. Karun will not let you go until you say yes. So just say yes and go. Right? Like, Thanks, I'm, I'm so, so I have to, Karun, you and Andy were unbelievable. Hey, Sam, today. you're out of time. I, you know, it's okay. <laughs> I, I, I have to tell you, Karun, you are a force of nature. I've been dealing with you on lots of things, and it's unbelievable. Andy, you were a superstar today. And all of my, you know, what's really nice is, is what Elias said about us being friends, because it's really fun to uh, uh, joust and, and to synergize and to do all sorts of things with people uh, that you respect that you care about and that are fun as colleagues in an important world. So thank you, Karun, and thank you, Andy. So Lena, you're in Spain, and good to have you. We didn't see, and I remembered her, like, you know, she left Brigham, and I said, let me find out. You know, she was pretty active on LinkedIn, and here she <laughs> is. So thanks a lot for being with us. I hope uh, really enjoying this, you know, the weather in Spain. I am, and thank you so much for, for inviting me. You know, even if I live in Spain, I, I still have all my projects and, and all my entrepreneurial projects in the States. And uh, it's, it's very exciting to be here and to be still connected to the pharma world, even if I left Novartis so many years. But now, you know, but the, the interest for me here is to not only uh, participate as a scientist, but also as a patient. And that has been my mission right now, which is to push uh, the rare disease understanding and, and uh, development in biomedical pharma as well, uh, you know, for, for this community of rare disease, especially for adult rare diseases that have been misdiagnosed for a long time. So thank you for giving me the chance to, to continue being linked to this uh, community. Karen Reeves, very, you know, diehard supporter, uh, like, you know, typically, you know, we have a, you know, registration fee. So she's one of those startups. She actually paid for it and she wanted to pay a registration fee a couple of years back over there. And that's how we connected. And you think I am persistent. She is, I think, 2X or 3X what I am. And even before this, uh, like, you know, she knows everybody, whether it's Martin McKay or Stelios and others. And it's, uh, you know, uh, I liked it. Uh, an email comes to Andy from one of his colleagues that, hey, Karen is going to be participating and she's my ex-colleague. And Andy forwards that to me that we should have her. I said, look, she's already coming for many, many years now, you know, and uh, pretty supportive. So Karen, welcome back. Thank, thank you so much. May I just say one thing to to the all the former colleagues of Pfizer and everybody else developing drugs. It's It's really an example of to save one person is to save the whole world. Uh, can you elaborate? <laughs> <laughs> so Karun is from the Talmud. From the Talmud. <laughs> from the Talmud. We, can, we can have one-on-one -on -one later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, David, thanks for uh, being here. I know it's a busy day for you. David Meeker. Yeah, no, thanks, uh, Karun. Uh, so I didn't catch uh, all the conference, but I will say, I think what uh, others have said, um, there's a tremendous value to having uh, people on panels who have been there multiple times. I think uh, much of our industry and the world we live in are people who pass through and they're sort of 30, 45 minutes um, talking to somebody or with, with people you may or may not know well, but there's a, a depth um, to this, which comes from uh, having worked together over years. And I think it brings a lot to this conference. Thanks. I really appreciate, you know, you've been, since Genzyme days, you know, been part of this, uh, you know, uh, platform. That's great. And uh, John Reed, you know, I hope you are feeling comfortable because uh, you know, Martin said, like you're a rookie, you know, whatever it was, first time. And uh, when we spoke a couple of days back, I said, you don't know much about the platform, but now hopefully you're getting to know a little bit uh, and we are well, I, I, I thank you I really enjoyed my uh, rookie rookie debut and uh, getting into the first game here um, didn't score any touchdowns or anything but uh, it was fun to be on the playing field 
Um, really uh, enjoyed the opportunity to dialogue. I think one of the uh, one of the benefits of a Congress like this, even uh, you know, even when it's done virtually, is that you know it helps you realize what a small world it is in which we operate in the biomedical research community. Um, you know how much we're all driven by the same core purpose of uh, helping patients and elevating the standard of care. And uh, I think Congresses like this, you know, can be a platform for future collaboration, you know, because it's really all about collaboration and, and, and creating the synergies from complementary expertise and resources. So um, I think it's, um, you know, congratulations, Karun, because I think you're a catalyst for collaboration. Well, thanks a lot uh, being here. And I hope, you know, probably you'll find some more time next year. Uh, we don't have to chase you for your appointments. So you keep clear your calendar and, you know, be with us <laughs> next year. I know you're busy, but I appreciate you, you spending time with us. Karen. Fun, thank you. Karen Akinsania. Did I pronounce it correctly? Yes, you did. Thank, thank you so you. much for the invite. I, I caught the uh, last panel. It's so inspiring to hear from the leaders who are, you know, really pushing forward the frontiers of what farm is going to look like in the future. And for those of us that are in smaller companies, and I'll just echo what John said, uh, I think by working together on a lot of the issues, not just drug discovery and drug development, but how biopharma is seen by the world, uh, how we can help the world. I think I understood Karen's comment there about, you know, if we help one patient, that's part of this huge journey to helping all patients. So I'm just very excited to be here and really appreciate you uh, inviting me and I look forward to participating next year. And congrats, really great. Oh, thanks a lot, really appreciate. Rajiv Call from California, or Bostonian right now in California. Well, I, 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 I had to make him wear a jacket today. So yesterday <laughs> we were chatting. I'm part of your fan club <laughs> and so, you know, I'm gonna just add to the uh, enthusiastic um, support from everyone. So thank you for that. You know, I, I'm a kid from Bombay with a dream to come to America. So it's very inspirational. Thanks to you to uh, connect some of these dots. So yeah, um, I'm going to say something yeah, about that. Uh, like last important. Zoom call, you did something for Sam. <laughs> I, I know where Sam hangs out. I I I I know how to how to catch him in his <laughs> uh, favorite location in New York City. We we uh, ran into we ran into each other the other day and we had fun. Good. Yes. Good. Well, I think Sam's there every evening at about seven thirty p.m. because I think this is the second time I've seen you there. Anyway, well, all, all that means is that you and I both went to the same place on those two days. The data management people will tell you that. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Uh, well, you know, and I would oh, also just say. Andy, you're so brilliant and eloquent. Um, your comment, I think, was the one that I'm taking away from the whole great conference. The where you where you said that you know today we're making the drugs, but in the future it's going to be the data driven information companies and the companies, the ten largest bi you know biopharma companies in the next decade, two decades are going to be very different from what we've seen today, and um, that really resonates with me. And I think that's a very visionary statement um, so thanks for everything yeah uh, thanks Rajiv and still you need to raise a toast which is pending for the last two and a half years you didn't raise a toast that day so we'll have it hopefully maybe in November December when things really improve and uh, we, we can have it for all, all, the, all, all the people in the group Anita well, Karun, thank you very much for having me be a part of this extraordinary group of people. I'm obviously the rookie here, but uh, it's, it's just very fortunate. And when I was doing work related to India, Karun was instrumental in making so many introductions and I'll be forever grateful. And I think ever since I've just been part of this group. And so thank you all for having me. Um, I think this is an industry that has a huge impact on people's lives everywhere in the world, irrespective of where you are and what socioeconomic class you belong to. And the fact that we're all able to contribute in that despite being part of a, a for-profit sort of organization as most of us are, I think is 
is a privilege that um, I'm very glad to be a part of. No, no. Pleasure having you, and I'm glad uh, your colleague Vivek could join. So uh, between two of you, I think uh, Roy was uh, well represented uh, over here. Daphne, you did a fantastic uh, job. We have been, you know, uh, chit chatting, uh, but I think you had a lot of depth uh, the way you uh, did it. So you know, congratulations to you, like what you did. So like to hear not about me, we can say something else. Yeah, thank you. And I wasn't sure if you were talking to me or the other Daphne, which is really unusual. There's hardly there's hardly ever a situation where there's another Daphne. So it was uh, nice to see. Well, you I just say that- Sorry, you missed one thing. Uh, Daphne, they, uh, actually, uh, Matai is not here. He won When your uh, the lower third came, those your name, uh, it was a mistake at the time. Uh, because, you know, you could watch because you were on stage. Oh, they okay. put uh, Daphne Collar at the time. So- Quickly, they had to replace it, and Mathai caught it uh, because you know I couldn't see that because I'm also in the stage. So he said they put the wrong one. Uh, I said it's yeah, definitely oh yeah, but it's definitely color. So and they corrected that later on within a few seconds. Yeah. So what I would say is when you first asked me to be part of this conference a year ago, I thought it was just a conference. I didn't realize it was like a community or I don't know if you want to call it a salon. But um, these, you know, calls that we have every few months, it's much more than a conference. It really is. You know, we get together and uh, hear, I hear, get to hear from um, some of the great colleagues here about where the industry is headed and um, all of the discussion. I actually think uh, that part of it for me has been um, really rewarding and I really appreciate being part of this community and I really enjoyed myself today. So thank you. I thought it was a great conference and, and well, I just uh, and compliments really, to everyone who participated. It was wonderful. Thank you. We really appreciate your advice and uh, you know your, your insights. So thanks a lot over there. We really appreciate what you're doing and uh, in terms of your professional work. So really thanks thanks a lot. Uh, you know, uh, appreciate over there. Bill Chin, you managed very well, Janet. I think it was a real smooth conversation and I got her text very messages good. from her staff. So she's very happy. She wants the copy of the video to be watched. <laughs> well, I have just a few thoughts. Um, I'm laughing because um, we, we just talked, Andy talked about dogs and uh, m one of my dogs just jumped up and licked me. So this is how, how it goes. So, so um, I guess I would have to agree with everyone. I, you know, I've been involved with, with uh, the summit for a number of years now. And I, I really think this was the best. And, and, and I think there was just so much community, collaborative spirit, uh, enough to you know, continue to sort of provide hope that you know, this, this industry will continue to be uh, fantastic. Um, I just want to say something about John Reed as a rookie. He did ask a very good question. Appreciate that. And then finally, um, I want to say something about you, Karun. Um, I've been trying to fathom why all of us seem to uh, be at your sort of beck and call. <laughs> you know, we say Andy's the supreme commander, but I say you're the supreme, supreme commander. Andy, you agree with that? You're nodding. Um, and, you know, what it is, Karun, is, um, is your, it's not just devotion. You really care about all this and you care you know i always thought you just care because that's your job you know <laughs> as, as, as head of the chamber of commerce but you care and i I've, I've known you through you know your personal involvement with with uh, illness and the family um and i just must say that that just touches me so much in terms of how you continue to conduct yourself um i think some of us know about your recent loss, uh, and I, you know, maybe you, you don't want to share that, but you had a recent loss of your mom, and and you know, I this is through all this planning, and uh, it's just amazing. So I have a tear in my eye, and um, I you know I salute you even more uh, for for what you do and what you do for all of us. So so thank you. Really, thanks. And, you know, like you said, something on the you know, mother, my, I lost my sister also, I just sister two weeks ago. Oh, you lost your sister, that's right. Yeah. She was just 69 within like 45 days. Uh, but, you know, yeah. what all of you do in the industry, in academics, in the research, I think it's so critical, so important. 
And this is what really motivates you, charges you, energizes you. Because when you see the pain, when you see the suffering, I didn't talk much in the morning uh, about the deadly COVID. I was there for a month in April at the peak. And that too, I was, you know, with, with my mom for about three weeks, uh, you know, two weeks in the ICU. And I could see the patients coming in there. It was uh, horrible. Like, you know, the worst thing is when you see that pain and you cannot do anything, you feel helpless because it, like the hospital can take maybe like you, Dr. Tren was in the morning from Medanta, maybe he can take 700, you know, people. In his, uh, but he has got 7,000 people turning up. What he can do, he can't help anybody over there. So the death, uh, the misery, and uh, like it, it was pretty terrible. And that's why I think uh, what we do today, it, it gives you some kind of satisfaction. It's not that you, you know, we all met today and some, you know, magic uh, vaccine or a pill will come at the end of the day. But I think all of you uh, have actually uh, seeded ideas, strategies, selflessly, like you know, whatever is public domain, and people will take it forward. Like you know, results won't come today, but. Somebody said about the deals, deals are happening. You know, people, some, they talk about it. They're in public domain, some are not. But when you have the right set of people in the room, things happen, good ideas emerge over there. But thanks, I really appreciate over there. So Dhawal, you didn't put your virtual background today, I was told. Um, because I didn't get one, Karun. <laughs> you have to buy it, you didn't pay for it. Or, you know, only sponsors get it. Oh, okay, well, I didn't pay for it. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> no problem. Uh, uh, hey, listen, uh, what a what a dynamic day. Uh, uh, I have to say that the uh, uh, the way people communicated with each other, got along, the panels were were really free flowing, and and I liked a lot of the back and forth. And uh, and Andy, uh, of course, always masterful. One of the things that uh, struck me the most today uh, was a, a little bit of what Janet Woodcock said. I'm not sure how many people picked up on it, but she called out uh, the community trial uh, where some uh, of the groups got together and, uh, and tried to do something together. For me, uh, the leaders of that group are right here at this table. Andy was a big driver of that, as well as Dave Reese, um, uh, who with Amgen really sponsored that community trial. Um, I'm lucky to be at the table with these guys because then I was able to uh, uh, work with them to do something, uh, you know, just join them. But it wouldn't have happened without this. This is one of those rare, um, times that I think we as um, sometimes competitors in industry actually can get together and, and really be friends and, and do form those collaborations. So I would say that that kind of collaboration is an example of what you have accomplished. Thanks a lot. Thank Sastri. you. Yeah, uh, first of all, it was a great day. Uh, each panel was really exciting and there were so many insights that came out of each of them. And after coming to this for quite a few years now, uh, I'm really excited about the community and, and I'm really excited to get together in person later this year or next year as we, as we start to get back to normalcy. And, and it's really a testament to, to the effort of a lot of the people that come together in this community that, uh, that we were able to come come up with a vaccine as well as therapeutics and in such a short time, it just validates everything that we do on a daily basis. And Karun, thank you for uh, pulling all of this together. And Andy, uh, it was a great, uh, it was a great session. And thank you for your coaching yesterday or day before, whenever we talked. Uh, it's just these little things that matter a lot. By the way, that uh, uh, PDF file, uh, it went to everybody. Like it was yeah. so uh, like, you know. It was fantastic. It, yeah, very simple things, but it helps uh, everybody, you know, uh, basically. Sam, this is your official time to speak. Wow. Well, I, I appreciate that. I've already said everything I, I wanted to say. You know, it is, by the way, I don't believe that Andy really meant that he was going to be the CEO of a, uh, a company only doing work in med tech uh, and data management. He, he, 
you know, was was sort of uh, uh, being nice. He's still going to be the, the head of research of drug discovery. I'm a big believer in drug discovery. And I only believe that data management works when you've got a lot of data and we still haven't gotten all the data we need. So it's a marriage and that marriage will move forward quite nicely. Karun, you know, I, I, I uh, spoke to you right after you got back from India and had spent that time in uh, uh, the ICU with your uh, mom and then brought her home. I told you then you were uh, a super son and it's rare to find people that are that committed to family and are that committed to what we do here and are that committed to lots of things. And that's why you're so unbelievable. Uh, uh, I must say that uh, you've had a hard year and yet at the same time, you've been doing everything you can to make this move forward. It's very impressive. And Andy, thank you for just spending the time. I, I know a lot of my colleagues out there, you know, from, from uh, John to, to Stelios to Chris uh, uh, and all of you don't have a lot of time uh, and we all make time for, for uh, uh, this, and I think it's great. And I think it actually serves a purpose. It makes our brains move in the right direction. Sometimes they just move and they don't always move in ways that are uh, uh, as useful as this makes them. So thank you. You were unbelievable. Thank both of you. Thanks, Sam. Uh I lost a mother on uh, 9th May, early morning, 2.30 in Delhi. And 8th May, uh, I think it was about 11.30 in the night, uh, me, Sam, and Dr. Trehin were on a uh, Zoom call at that time, uh, you know, working on some uh, something else, which you know Sam felt that is important uh, to save lives in uh, you know uh, India. And uh, this was about, I think, 11.30, 12. We finished the call at 12.30, and after two hours, uh, you know, uh, I lost her uh, over there. And you know, if you look at this uh, screen right now, we have uh, you know colleagues uh, from different faiths uh, over there. So she, uh, we are all Hindu by faith. So I wanted to celebrate her life, uh, you know, on that 13th day. So I had a multi-faith uh, service. So I had a you know like a Hindu priest, a Sikh priest. Uh, I had a, a Imam. I had a you know a Reverend, uh, you know Bishop from Delhi was there. And then I uh, wanted to get a, a rabbi, you know. So I didn't know at that time that, you know, Andy could do the same that uh, Kudish, right? The prayer he told me. <laughs> so, uh, of course, you know, uh, Rajiv has bumped into, you know, Sam uh, in New York uh, two times in the same, some exotic or exciting place. So I called Sam, Sam, I need a rabbi. <laughs> you know? So here it was Sam. So he... I think it was name was Steve, right? So he called me. He said, "Sam wants me to do prayers for your mom." And you know, then we had this, you know, uh, all five, you know, uh, prayer, uh, you know, religious prayers were there. He logged in from New York, and then other pre uh, the bishop was from Bangalore, and Imam from Mumbai. So this is the other side of Sam. I don't know how much religious he is, but he knows the right people. So when you need a rabbi to do anything, whether it's your wedding or funeral, you can, you know, besides <laughs> doing a deal making, you can call yeah, him. Don't Sam. call me. <laughs> Don't call me about any weddings, by the way. <laughs> but <laughs> anything else, it's fine. Uh, no, that, that, that's uh, good. So I think we have covered everything except, uh, you know, uh, Chris. So Chris, I want to give you the last word. You're on mute, Chris. Because you have, probably has two or three monitors. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um... You know, a lot's been said. I, I, I particularly appreciated Bill's uh, comments and also Sam. I mean, I think uh, I would agree that Stelio said, I think this was the best one yet. And um, despite the fact that you had so many difficulties uh, through the year, and we talked a number of times too, and, and uh, uh, our deepest condolences to, uh, for the loss of your mother and, and your sister. Um, you know, I think it also came at a, at a really um, good time because you know, even the oldest among us have been through a unique life experience the last uh, uh, 18 months. Uh, none of us have ever experienced anything like this. And um, both on a personal level, but also on a professional level, because uh, this crisis put healthcare right in the middle of it. Um, it caused uh, uh, everyone to, to really 
think about what we have been doing for decades, I think because what we do has so much underlying risk that the actual process of what we do is very conservative. You know, we haven't, you know, why haven't we been doing online uh, signing up of patients and consenting of patients before? I mean, it made no sense, but you know, it has always been done this way. Um, We've also been working in silos in a lot of different ways, uh, despite some of the collaborative efforts. So it was a great time, I think, to take stock of saying, you know, we really had to question almost everything that we do um, and have done on, on autopilot for, for many years and, and try to capitalize on that um, for, the, for the betterment of, of patients in, in outside of COVID. So I think that, that was a really good time to, for us to, to reflect on that. Um, it, I thought all the, the, uh, the panels had good pace, flowed well, um, the graphics were, were great. Um, I would also uh, congratulate you on, on we have done a better job of inclusiveness um, uh, this year. And what struck me is, is that in so doing, how much uh, tremendous talent that we capture um, that way. There's just amazing talent um, in this industry. And, and, and that's the real benefit of inclusiveness is that we, we actually... Can, can bring more people from whom we can learn and who bring different thoughts. And, you know, there's always a risk that those of us who've known each other for many years, we think in a particular way, but, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's the need for disruption constantly in our business. And uh, I think we, we, we need these uh, disruptive forces by constantly having a new flow of talent and in, in bringing new thoughts. So I, I want to congratulate you, Karun, for all that, you know, bringing this together despite a challenging year. And, and particularly for Andy, um, you know, Andy, you, you, you're, you're, hopefully you didn't have to travel quite as much to Japan this year, um, but still, you know, you're sitting on top of a huge machine. Um, and, I, you know, we all know too well the pressures uh, uh, that people like you and John are under in these, in these large, uh, uh, vast corporations and the, the job never ends and that you find the time to do, um, to, to, to do this. Um, it's not just a time today, but you know, obviously a huge amount of thought has to go into making all of these panels a success. This doesn't just happen uh, by itself. And uh, it's just amazing that you do that. It's a, it's a real act of leadership um, uh, that goes beyond your just your day job. You're, you're really, I couldn't be more proud of you and how you've stepped up as a, as a leader in our, in our industry. So um, congratulations and thank you. Well, I totally agree with you, Silios, I think, because Andy will again, uh, no, he is pretty good in giving the you know, return, returning uh, the ball. So <clears throat> he's always accessible because uh, you know the, I keep telling him my biggest issue is the access. Because I understand people are busy, but you can't chase you know once, twice, uh, thrice over there. But Andy, if you are to I I even on a weekend, there are like crises which will happen. He will always be very calm and quiet and give you a, you know counsel over there. And that's where, you know, your strength is there that, you know, sometimes you take wrong decisions. Sometimes, you know, you're like pretty excited about certain things over there, but you, know, you can always count on him because he will either text you, write to you or call you. He's available. So it's brilliant. But I must tell you something uh, like yesterday night, uh, it was with Stelio as we exchanging because I want to make sure that uh, like his chat with Pfizer, uh, his uh, dear friend Albert goes well. Because, you know, like Chris, you said about the corporation. So the big corporation, you know, have this communication colleagues and, uh, you know, their VP of corporate affairs and, you know, regulatory affairs. So they are very, like, they, they try to put it, they understand that, you know, that they have to do the job over there. And uh, so yesterday, uh, CNBC in India, like, you know, I knew their, uh, you know, managing editor for a long time. So she said, oh, we are doing this because right now, I think whatever Pfizer is doing or going to do with India is pretty hot. And till date, uh, Albert has not spoken to anybody in India. Direct. Of course, it's been done by his staff and colleagues and, you know, Asia Pacific uh, heads, uh, what all. So this was very timely. I think uh, you know, heads off to Stelio as that, you know, he made it look so easy as if, you know, uh, Albert just walked in here. Since last September, he has been, you know, uh, talking to him. He agreed on that. And he kept his calendar free for uh, today. And he was very, very open. So there was a lot of excitement, but um, yesterday, so this Shreen Bhan, she is the managing uh, you know, editor of uh, CNBC in India. So she said, we want to cover this. I said, okay, what do you want to cover? He said, no, we want to uh, do this Albert uh, Bulla's uh, chat. I said, the man who's doing it is uh, Stelios. So he said, yes, so we want to bring it live, do it live. I said, okay, you, you, you do it. So 
I just uh, you know uh, emailed Stelios that they want to do it live. He says, "Wonderful, go for that." I said, "Okay." I told her that uh, he's uh, very happy. You can do that, and she was so happy. And then Stelios said, "You want me to announce it?" Like it didn't mean that with marketing point of view, but so I said, Stelios said, uh, "Should he announce it?" So she was all over, you know. So what they did today, I'm looking at all the tweets which are there on CNBC in India. I didn't even know what they did, but they got the direct feed from our streaming partners, and because they, as if you know, it was their feed which is coming in. It's exclusive. They got it. You know, it's called CNBC exclusive. You know, with Albert, <laughs> but it's got it. And every media house, the newspapers, like whatever he said, I, I think you, if you Google it today. You'll find out, you know, it's on fire. Like, you know, but I told the joking day to Stelios that your fireside actually is on fire. You know, uh, all over India is the first time Stelios spoke, and there's a hope. And you know, I can tell you, like, uh, idea is that you know they're they're feeling that uh, in this uh, second uh, COVID wave, uh, it was pretty brutal. And the next wave, they think it could be harming the children uh, disproportionately. And the only vaccine which is there available is trial is uh, Pfizer vaccine. So there is a hope that whatever this year, next year, they need that. Otherwise. They will be in big, big trouble. So, Stelios, thanks a lot for getting it done. It is not just getting a CEO of a Pfizer, but it was very timely because when we discussed last year, we didn't. September was not a time we thought we'll be in this situation in COVID with the second wave. Uh, but it was great. He came. He was very eloquent, and he really meant, uh, like in the public domain, whatever he could share. So, I think that for me was a big, uh, you know, uh, take. And of course, the biggest thing was what Andy did, so smooth, very quietly did everything, and uh, you know. So thank you so much. I know it's about 4:30, raining in Boston, uh, in my in the North Shore. <laughs> so I could hear the you know rain over there. So I know you're all in different locations. Enjoy it. We will definitely try to meet. Uh, we are hopefully we are all vaccinated. Understand. So maybe in November, December, we will do our private small dinner. Start with that. Uh, things should be okay, and we'll keep the dialogue on. But thanks a lot. Really appreciate the good work, the critical work all of you are doing. See you soon, all of you. Really appreciate. Blessed to have all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.